Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. I'm sorry this video is going out quite a bit later than usual, but as you can see, I'm in a completely different area. In fact, I'm actually on a bit of a vacation and there's been some issues. I woke up with a bunch of crap all over my face, so if I look terrible, I do apologize. My girlfriend's sick. It's just been a pretty wild day. Either way, I've still got a bunch of stuff to go over today. Starting with new coolers, confirmation on two new GPUs. You may have a fake one of these. Intel's Arc GPUs cost what? And why AMD? Why? Okay, it's news time and first up for today, you may have seen this slide before. In fact, I actually went over it quite a long time ago. And as you can see, it is new thermal solutions from Intel that come with their CPUs, specifically their 65 watt models. Well, in a new post by known leaker, Momomo underscore US, you can see that he shared one of these CPU coolers. Basically, this confirms that Intel is in fact going to be releasing new coolers with their upcoming 65 watt CPUs. Once again, if you remember, it says only for their 65 watt solutions, meaning their non-K models, which obviously aren't out yet. Now, from everything we've heard, it does look like they are gonna be releasing fairly soon, but basically they are gonna be coming with brand new fans. And next up for today, as you can see, we have an EEC filing by PowerColor. And what's interesting about this is that they actually submitted quite a few GPUs with two of them being new. First, we have the RX 6500 XT, which we have discussed before, and it comes with four gigabytes of GDDR6. So this effectively confirms that we are looking at a four gigabyte card, which I honestly do have to say is fairly disappointing. I mean, we're in 2021. Yes, this is a 6500 XT. It's a fairly low end GPU, but still four gigabytes doesn't get you far. The next GPU is the RX 6400. And if we look at all of these, you can see that to probably no surprise to you, it once again comes with four gigabytes of GDDR6. Except I will actually say if we look right here, it almost suggests that this could come with four or maybe even two gigabytes of GDDR6. I'm not sure if this is just something in the naming of it, but it at least seems to suggest it on this model. Although none of the other models seem to suggest it, they pretty much all say four gigabytes. And next up for today, we have a really interesting story from TFT Central. Now, before I get to it, for anyone who doesn't know, HDMI 2.1 is the brand new standard of HDMI past 2.0. Now, while 2.1 may not sound all that great, it actually adds quite a bit of new things. For example, it comes with variable refresh rates, auto low latency, and it's also the only way with HDMI for you to get past 4K 60. In fact, it actually gets up to 4K 120 hertz with 10-bit color depth. As you can see here, it's only 4K 60 with 8-bit color depth. So it offers quite a bit more. In fact, it's pretty much the only way HDMI can continue to compete with DisplayPort. And you may not have heard about it too much until the consoles came out. Both of them were touting HDMI 2.1 support. What's interesting is that TFT Central actually found out that Xiaomi was selling an LCD monitor and at the bottom of the page, they actually list inclusion of two HDMI 2.1 ports, but they pretty much aren't HDMI 2.1. When we go down here at the bottom of the page, there are some terms and conditions and in it they say, quote, due to the subdivision of HDMI certification standards, HDMI 2.1 is divided into TMDS. In parentheses, the bandwidth is equivalent to the original HDMI 2.0. See, here's the thing. HDMI 2.1 is supposed to use the newer FRL, not TMDS, or at least it supports it. And that is what allows it to get past 4K 60. So basically, they are saying this is, this comes with two HDMI 2.1 ports, yet, 
it only has the bandwidth of HDMI 2.0, meaning it's essentially an HDMI 2.0 port. Well, TFT Central actually spoke with, I think it's right down here. Yeah, they spoke with the HDMI licensing administrator because obviously that at least seems to us to be false advertising. Well, they said this. HDMI 2.0 no longer exists, and devices should not claim compliance to version 2.0 as it is not referenced anymore. The features of HDMI 2.0 are now a subset of 2.1. So clearly there's a lot of issues with that. Uh, well, really quickly, I'll just go ahead and say this one. It says all the new capabilities and features associated with 2.1 are optional. This includes FRL, the higher bandwidths, VRR. Basically, what they've done is they've taken HDMI 2.0, wrapped it in with 2.1, and pretty much everyone can just call, whether it's essentially 2.0, they can call it 2.1, even though some 2.1s are significantly better than other 2.1s. And what they said, if a device claims compliance to 2.1, then they need to also state which features the device supports so there is no confusion. Um, consumers are not going to do this, period. They're going to see HDMI 2.1 go, oh, yay, the new one, except it's not really HDMI 2.1. Basically, they're saying this is completely fine, even though they have essentially what is HDMI 2.0 advertised as HDMI 2.1. But because 2.0 essentially doesn't exist anymore and it's been rolled under 2.1. But the issue with this is that you essentially have to go way deep into this just to find out whether it's actually the real new HDMI 2.1 or the 2.1 where 2.0 just rolled under it and it's basically the same bandwidth as the last generation of HDMI. So could there be a 2.1 that has the faster bandwidth but doesn't have some of the other things that come with it? I don't think so, mostly because I think a lot of this is held back by bandwidth, but I don't know. They may have bits and pieces of the newer features, but not all of them. So this, at least if you ask me, is completely absurd, but as of now, the actual licensing administrator, um, the ones who do the HDMI licensing that are kind of over the whole thing, are basically saying, no, this is completely fine. And next up for today, we have a really interesting story that's actually good news. I know good news is extremely scarce these days, especially when it comes to hardware, but this is really nice and it originally comes from Moore's Law is Dead. This story is about Intel's Alchemist. And first up, I'm going to go over the specs as well as what they're competing against as far as performance. First up, we have the 512 EU GPU, which is a 16 gigabyte card with 16 gigabit per second GDDR6. And it's apparently set to compete with the 3070 slash 3070 Ti. Next up, we have the 384 EU GPU, which comes with 12 gigabytes of 16 gigabit per second GDDR6. And this one is set to compete with the 3060 slash 3060 Ti, though according to Moore's Law is Dead, it's very, very close to the 3060 Ti, but just a tiny bit slower. And next, you may quickly notice that it's almost like he skipped one because we go right to the 128 EU GPU. If you've been following the channel, you've heard about a 256 EU GPU. But according to Moore's Law is Dead, that looks like it's just going to be for notebooks. This right here is for desktops. So Intel is apparently set to launch only three GPUs for desktop, though, as you can see, with the 128 EU GPU, which comes with six gigabytes of 16 gigabit per second GDDR6, it's set to go against Navi 24. So basically, it does look like they have quite a bit of the market covered here. But the really interesting part, and the part that I really want to talk about, is the fact that these should be priced, at least according to Moore's Law is Dead, 10% plus lower than NVIDIA's counterparts while outperforming them, meaning that it would be priced probably a little bit lower than the 3070 or 3060, depending on which model we're looking at, yet it performs better. So Intel is actually looking to undercut NVIDIA's prices, which at least in this market is definitely great news. 
Now, that is obviously MSRP, but hopefully by the time these are completely released, supply will finally at least be near demand where we don't see these massive jumps in price. And speaking of release, he also did go over that a little bit as well, and according to him, they are going to start mass producing these in Q1 with the bigger ramp up closer to the earlier part of Q2. So these likely won't release with a ton of GPUs, but hopefully as we get into a little bit more into the year, there will actually be some that we can buy. And lastly for today, this actually brings me to the bad news, the really bad news. If you've been following the channel, you know that a little while back, we actually saw some mining GPUs by XFX that used an AMD GPU. Well, obviously, given it's XFX, but basically it meant that AMD was releasing GPUs specifically for the crypto market. And that looks to be pretty much 100% confirmed. As you can see here, video cards specifically said that the GPU, which is called the BC160, is a crypto mining card that comes with a Navi 12 GPU, eight gigabytes of HBM2 memory, and is now available for $2,000 US, which of course the pricing, wow, pretty much depressing, but the simple fact is AMD is making mining cards. Now, with that said, yes, this is based on Navi 12, so it is an AMD's newest GPUs, but if you remember, Navi 12 is still based on the same seven nanometer TSMC process. And of course, TSMC does only give AMD so much allotment of their seven nanometer node. So whatever is done here is likely taken away from their RDNA 2 gaming GPUs. And the depressing part is the fact that this is a pretty good GPU as far as crypto mining because it actually gets 70 mega hashes per second, which is right around, I think, the 3070, 3070 Ti. So basically, this is a fairly good mining GPU. Thanks, AMD. So yeah, while that does it for today, I know we had some good news and then definitely some really bad news, but are you excited for Intel's upcoming GPUs or are you more annoyed that AMD is releasing a mining card? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please subscribe. And as always, have a great day.